This is the Poco F4 disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. First, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Here's a better look at that. Next, we need to use a hairdryer or a heat gun to apply heat to the back plate to loosen up the adhesive underneath. And then we're gonna use a plastic pry tool to pry the back plate off. Here's a better look at the glass back plate. The glass camera lens cover can be replaced by applying heat and prying it off. And here's a look at the other side. There are 17 Phillips screws that need to be removed. Now the top cover can be lifted up and removed. There's an antenna line drawn on the right side, which is this light gray color line. The NFC antenna is located to the left of that. And on the left bottom corner, there's the LED flash and light sensor. Looking at the back, there's graphite film to help transfer heat. There are two battery cables which need to be disconnected before we can proceed to disconnect the rest of the cables. Now that those battery cables have been disconnected, we can go ahead and disconnect the rest of the cables. There are two coaxial cables on the bottom right side of the board that need to be disconnected by just popping them off. There's some graphite foam covering the front facing camera connector which needs to be peeled off so we can disconnect that. The 20 megapixel front facing camera itself is glued in place so if we try to remove that it will probably get damaged. Now the main board can be lifted up and removed. On the main board, there's a 64 megapixel main camera, an 8 megapixel ultra wide lens, and a 2 megapixel tele macro lens. The camera connectors can be disconnected by just popping them off. The main camera is the only one with OIS or optical image stabilization. There's a secondary microphone underneath the shield, an infrared or IR blaster on the top right corner, and some graphite foam over the front shields to help transfer heat. Taking a look at the back, there's copper tape and thermal paste on the back shields to help transfer heat. Once the copper tape is peeled off, we can see thermal paste on top of the processor and these chips, as well as this thermal pad which sits on top of the memory, and a thermal pad on top of this chip. Here's a better look with the thermal paste removed. Moving on to the bottom speaker assembly, we're going to have to lift up the white coaxial cable out of the socket. And then we can lift up and remove the speaker assembly. There's some more graphite film over the speaker assembly to help transfer heat. There's a mesh filter over the speaker opening. And here's the speaker itself. The white coaxial cable connects to an antenna board on the side of the speaker. Once the speaker assembly is removed, we can see this flex cable for the screen, which is connected to another flex cable that goes for the SIM reader. And that flex cable connects to the main board. So if you needed to replace the screen, you'd have to remove the back plate. You would remove the screws on the top and bottom covers, then lift up and remove the top cover, disconnect the battery cables and the white coaxial cable, and then remove the bottom speaker assembly, giving you access to the screen cable. At that point, you disconnect the flex cable for the screen, heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry your old screen off, apply new adhesive, reapply the new screen, making sure you run the flex cable back through the opening in the mid frame, and reassemble your phone. To remove the battery, there's an adhesive pull tab to help you pry the battery off. Here's a better look at the 4,500 milliamp hour battery. Now that the battery adhesive pouch is peeled off, we can disconnect and remove this flex cable which connects the subboard to the main board. And we'll disconnect the flex cable for the screen. 
and then we'll peel off the flex cable for the sim reader and remove it. Here's a better look at the sim reader. Now the subboard can be lifted up and removed, but be careful since the black coaxial cable is still attached underneath. The charger port is located in the center and there's a red rubber gasket around it. And the primary microphone is located underneath the shield. Here's a look at the other side. Once the battery is removed and these flex cables are peeled off, we have a better look at the vapor chamber which sits underneath the battery and runs along underneath the motherboard. The x-axis linear motor is located on the bottom. The flex cable for the fingerprint reader and power button is located here. And the one for the volume key is located right here. If you wanted to remove those, you'd have to lift up and remove this red rubber gasket. And then you'd peel off the flex cables and pull them out of the frame. The proximity sensor is located on the top, as well as the earpiece speaker, and that's held on with some adhesive. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 5.5 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once all the screws are back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.